Good morning, viewers. We are glad that you've joined us this wonderful morning for our property finance webinar. We will begin shortly, so just stay put. Thank you. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to NCBA Property Finance Webinar themed to buy or build, which is obviously the big debate that we intend to 
um, demystified today. It is indeed a great pleasure to be hosting our third property finance webinar today. And on behalf of the NCBA Group Managing Director, Mr. John Gashora, and the entire NCBA leadership, I would like to appreciate you taking the time to log in to this webinar today. My name is Philip Omondi, and I'm the Business Development Manager Property Finance at NCBA Bank, and I'll be your moderator for today. We've lined up a panel of industry experts who will unpack our theme for today and share an outlook on what's better, an established house or a brand new house. I'm therefore delighted to extend a warm welcome to our speakers and panelists for today who will, who will engage us in this discussion. No particular order, our panelists for today and to our panelists, um, I'll just request you to say hi to our viewers this morning. I'll start with uh, Mr. Lawrence Chiarie, who is a development manager at uh, Centum Real Estate. Lawrence, say hi to our viewers. Uh, thank you, Philip. Um, morning, everyone. Um, as he's introduced, I work at Centum Real Estate, where we really focus on providing housing to the many Kenyans that we have. And I look forward to an engaging session today. Thank you, Mr. Kiarie. On to our second speaker, uh, Ms. Emma Miloyo, who is an architect and a partner at Design Source. Emma, please say hi to our viewers. Um, good morning, uh, viewers, <laughs> um, and uh, wonderful to be here this morning and uh, looking forward to a very exciting conversation on to buy or to build. I happen to be an architect, but I've also co-authored a book called Building in Kenya. Um, so really, uh, I will be unpacking that and uh, uh, answering questions on the building side, uh, and I'm excited to be able to impart this knowledge to our viewers. Asante Sana. Thank you, Emma. And last but not least, um, I would like to introduce Stella Mutai, who is our head of property finance at NCBA Bank. Stella. Thank you, Philip, and good morning, viewers. Glad to be here and uh, glad to be joined by experts, uh, Lawrence and uh, Emma. Thank you. To our viewers this morning, please feel free to send in your questions um, or comments using the chat box for those on Zoom. Um, and Facebook. And of course, we are also live on YouTube. Uh, please feel free to use the comment section to send in your questions. At a later point in time, we'll, we'll be addressing those questions um, in totality. Allow me to make the following remark, remarks to set the context for this discussion that we have today. When it comes to building versus buying a house in Kenya today, everyone will have their own reasons for choosing one over the other. Ultimately, it's about what's right for you. For most Kenyans looking to own their home, buying an existing house is a great option. And there are lots of choices available for, for purchase. But what happens when you have something specific in mind? Building a house gives you a chance to have one that fits your exact needs and specifications from the floor plan design to new customized um, fixtures and fitting. However, supervising construction workers Picking supplies, um, getting government permit, permits, and overall project management is not a walk in the park, especially for first timers. When I look at buying a, ho a home, one question I see buyers face is whether to purchase an established property or buy land and build from scratch. While both methods offer significant financial and social benefits, ultimately, the better method depends on priorities of the buyer. Today, investing in a home for your family is one of the most important tasks that you will have to undertake. Should you buy an existing home or build a new one? Even with the current COVID-19 led conditions, property still remains a lucrative instrument to invest in. Investing in property has always been positioned as the ideal investment vehicle for long-term growth and returns. And surprisingly, the path to home ownership can be a tricky one. And at any given time, you ask yourself questions like, where do I start? What do I do? However, with the right kind of advice, the journey is a rewarding one. We have witnessed a change in economic trends following the COVID-19 pandemic, and this had, has had some effects on the property market. And as a bank that encourages and supports our customers to go for their goals, we have hosted this webinar to provide an outlook for our topic for today. 
May I reiterate that at NCBA, we continue to support our customers, keep them informed, and help them to make the right financial decisions concerning the property market. Well, ladies and, and gentlemen, it now gives me great pleasure to invite our, our, our keynote speaker, who will give us our opening remarks. And that happens to be um, our deputy director and head of personal banking, um, Ms. Masi Kagwiria, to give us the opening remarks. Over to you, Masi. Um, thank you so much, Philip. Um, thank you. So good morning, our viewers, distinguished guests, our fellow uh, panelists, speakers, our very, very valued customers, uh, my NCBA colleagues who have logged into this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we are so happy that you've logged in. We are so happy you've joined us. We are so happy to have this conversation. Okay, so there's, there's a global entrepreneur called Armstrong Williams and he says, one thing I tell everyone um, is learn about real estate, okay? Because it provides the highest values and the highest returns and arguably the lowest risks. So I'm here just to tell our viewers, listen and learn about real estate because the value puts on the table, it's huge. So like Philip has said, there's been this very long standing um, uh, debate, you know, within the Chama groups, uh, informal chit chats, within your colleagues, your family spaces. I'm sure you've definitely heard about this debate. Um, do I buy a home or a house or a property or do I build? And therefore, the purpose of this conversation, again, like Philip has mentioned, um, is, is that NCBA, we want to put that debate uh, to rest once and for all. So please, you know, buckle your seats, listen to our, our very able panelists, and let's have a conversation. In terms of context, um, on the broader perspective, the Kenyan real estate sector um, generally has experienced reduced growth. When you look at 2019 vis-a-vis -vis uh, 2020, um, and, and we all understand, I mean, the pandemic hit a lot of the businesses, a lot of the incomes, and obviously we saw a downturn um, on, on, on in terms of the real estate um, as a market. However, very interestingly, we still did see um, increased activities on the construction space. We did see increased approvals. Um, National Construction Authority records are clear um, in terms of increased approvals in the year 2020. And also we did see um, increase in terms of cement consumption, meaning there was actually um, increased activities around construction of home, homes and construction of properties. So that, that is an interesting trend, okay? Um, there is of course also a lot of government activities around infrastructure, large scale in infrastructure projects, whether we are talking about JKIA Expressway, um, Western Bypass, Mau Summit Highway, um, Tatu City, Dongo Kundu bypass within the coastal region. Um, you probably have interacted with either or a couple of these um, infrastructure projects. This honestly uh, brings um, very great value in terms of boosting regional integration and economic diversification, and obviously catalyzes um, um, economic growth within not only Kenya, but across the region. So we are in a good space um, in, in, in terms of real estate uh, as an industry and, and the outlook is actually quite positive. So in terms of this year, market experts are projecting a growth of between four and 6% within the real estate um, industry. Again, I would say, um, looking at where we have come from, um, not a very good pandemic, um, loss of a lot of business um, income, it is a good outlook. Four to 6% in 2021 projection um, of growth is, is, is again a very good um, uh, outlook. So it's timely therefore having this conversation and we should be positive um, about engaging in matters real estate. 
So what I would close my initial comments with is to say, don't wait to buy or build real estate. Buy or build real estate and then sit and wait and enjoy your investment. Because after all, this is arguably the most expensive um, and, and the best investment you then make in life. As I close my remarks and leave the able panelists to continue with the conversation, it would be important to note as a bank, we are very keen um, in supporting you as our customer, you as our potential customers. In fact, in the year 2021, we have experienced a growth of 60% um, more than we did in the year 2020 in terms of our mortgage disbursements, meaning we have supported more customers than we did last year. And, and therefore, meaning we are providing more value um, for you as our customers and offering more solutions for you, our customers um, uh, this year. So engage with us. I will. Uh, close my remarks with a very simple quote. You can dream, you can create, you can design the best and the most wonderful place in the world, but it actually takes people to make that dream um, a reality. So in the whole of this conversation, uh, consider people, right? So I do hope you will find this session uh, quite insightful, um, that you will take that bold step to either build or buy, and at NCBA, we are here to be your partners and to make that dream uh, become a reality. Thank you so much, Philip. Uh, back to you. Um, and again, Karibuni Sana to all, all our viewers um, and all our customers. Um, let's, let's listen um, to, to this great debate. Asante Nisana. Thank you, Masi, for amplifying um, the context of what we intend to discuss this morning and equally for reaffirming that indeed NCB aspires to be a financial partner. And in doing so, we inspire growth. And of course, we encourage and support, support our customers to go for their goals. Um, that therefore um, takes us to the discussion that we have today to put this debate to rest. And at this point in time, I would therefore like to welcome our panelists for today who will engage us in this discussion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce um, our first speakers for today, Mr. Lawrence Criaria, who is the development manager at Centum Real Estate. Um, obviously, Lawrence at Centum um, is involved in project conception, covering site identification, acquisition, um, highest and best use analysis, project financing, construction, and sale of property. Um, Lawrence has worked on, on large-scale mixed-use projects, residential and affordable housing, hospitality, renewable energy, infrastructure, retail, and land development. So with that brief CV, of course, Lawrence has vast experience when it comes to matters construction and of course uh, property acquisition and sales. Additionally, Lawrence is part of a team at Centum that is overseeing construction of nearly about 2,300 houses located not only in Nairobi, uh, but spread across Mombasa and Kampala. With that brief introduction, I would like to invite Mr. Lawrence Kiare to share his remarks. Over to you, Lawrence. Um, <clears throat> Uh, thank you. Thank you, Philip. Um, so if we can start on the slides. Okay, thank you. Um, so before I start, Marcy, I noticed that you mentioned some of the big infrastructure projects in the country, and you mentioned Tatu. I think you also forgot Two Rivers and uh, Vipingo Development, um, which are also quite huge. <laughs> um, so if, if we can start. So I think I'll just uh, mention some of the factors that you'd consider, whether you're building or buying um, for your new home. So obviously they say real estate, it's all about location, but this really depends on your needs um, and your stage of life. Uh, you'd look at things like work, schools, and most importantly, places of work. Affordability is also important. Obviously you can only afford a house that falls within the budget that you have in mind. And then long-term perspective, this is something that probably most buyers would not look at. Um, by this, I mean, 
what's what do you see yourself doing in the house say in two years time so if it's something you want to sell probably you want a location that would be easy to sell if it's something that you see yourself holding for say long-term rent again you'll be looking at such factors like the rental yields in the area um size um developers would normally price a house on a per square meter rate which means the bigger the house the more expensive it is so just think about it. Do you, do you really need all this size? Um, because you'll pay for it. Also, the service charge would be as a factor of the size. So that would be a factor that buyers would look at. Again, do you have a young family or are you, let's say, an empty nester where most of your kids have, say, moved out of the house? So you probably need a smaller house then. Again, say this if you're building for yourself, because this is where this affects uh, most the zoning regulations in the area. Um, many times we've seen, I mean, you come, you build a nice house somewhere and say a few years later, two, three years later, then your neighbor comes and does um, an apartment building and you probably had in mind a place where you could even retire in future. So zoning regulation and how strict um, the area, at least the council in the area adheres to that, that has a very significant impact on the long-term value of your property. So it's something that you'd really consider. Um, so you probably want, if it's low density residentials, a place that is well established um, with low density, um, it's been there for a while and you can see what's happening around with the new developments that are coming in on board. And I left this point for last because I think it's, um, it's a big point. Obviously, if you're choosing to buy, then the developer's reputation and track record um, would be worth considering. I mean, this, this is where you'd find uh, some of the bad rep that would come to our industry um, because of maybe a few developers. So just checking the track record and the reputation of the developer would be quite, quite helpful. Uh, moving on. Okay, um, so obviously um, working for a real estate developer, I would really push for the purchasing option. And obviously the main one, and I think Philip mentioned on this, is on the risk management aspect um, of construction. Um, I mean, various studies would show you that about 70% of projects are within of 10% uh, of the initial budget and also the timeline, that's about 75%. And you can imagine, um, this is a sample that also includes experienced developers, so who would have a very big team of managing the project and that's something that they would not necessarily get right all the time. So if you choose to purchase, you're not taking on this risk on yourself, but you're rather passing it on to a developer who's probably better placed to, to handle that risk. It's more convenient um, buying a house. Again, going back to the point that it's more complex and time consuming. I mean, if, if you do have the time, that's something that you could consider, but I believe for most of us, um, I mean, given our day jobs and all the other things that we have to deal with, um, we probably not have the time um, to go and just supervise the construction of a project. Again, there's also the experience that is needed in the construction process. I mean, knowing if say I'm starting with my foundations, what comes next and probably what you should be purchasing um, before, and even how do you review the drawings that come say from the architect? So, I mean, it's best passing this on to somebody who's more best placed to handle that kind of um, thing. Um, and then on quality, again, this, this, this is a bit debatable, but generally for, for a developer, I mean, for purchased houses, you'd get a higher quality of finish and workmanship um, because um, the developer would be working at scale and they're able to afford architects who are more experienced. They can really afford them because the cost will be spread over many houses they then have a project management team that could be employed to supervise the construction and the quality. So what that means for you as a buyer is at the end of the day, you have a better product vis-a-vis -vis, um, if you do it on yourself, and then you're the one who has to determine what's, you know, what's the right quality, uh, quality. So again, that would be an advantage on purchasing, uh, moving on. Again, the other one is on common amenities. Um, so if you think of things like pool, um, it's probably cheaper to build a pool and run one if you are, say, within an estate. Um, of course, we know the individuals who have their pools, but I believe that's not the majority of us. 
but then you'd be able to enjoy such um, amenities if you're part of an estate. Um, and this would obviously be said through uh, purchasing, uh, whether it's uh, a mixed use development on low density or whether it's a um, apartment building. And again, the quality, I mean, the cost of managing these amenities is also spread out um, among the number, the many number of units that are within the estate. So again, this is an advantage of, of, um, of purchasing. And also things like the kids play area and the maintenance of this. I mean, if typically you'll probably be developing on say an eighth of land, again, you'd probably have more space if you're part of a larger, larger mixed use or rather larger development location. Um, we all know, we probably want to be closer to the CBD because within the CBD, we are looking at things like the more established schools, more other amenities, things like the hospital. Um, most places of work would be within again the say the CBD area or just the outskirts. Now, what tends to happen with that is the closer you move towards such locations, the land price is generally more expensive. Now, how would you then access these locations? So it would make sense for say a developer coming in and purchasing that land, because then they can do many units at them um, on the piece of land say probably by densifying the project and having it as an apartment building. Um, if then the other option you have is building, chances are you probably have to be anything between 25 uh, plus kilometers uh, from the CBD, just so that you get um, more affordable land. So again, purchasing gives you that flexibility to be near these amenities. Um, there's flexibility in options if you choose the purchase option. Um, but again, this, there's a caveat in this, so if, say, I look at um, the St. Ambri portfolio, we would then have projects in Nairobi. Um, we have some in Mombasa and Kampala. Again, even in Nairobi, we are, say, within five sites. Um, that means um, if you're choosing to, to buy, you have the option of choosing within any of those locations that we have. In fact, we've even seen in the past where a buyer has come and, say, paid a deposit for a two-bedroom, say, in two rivers. And even within two rivers, like we have many projects, they can easily switch to say, I want a three bedroom, depending on the changes or rather the things that have happened within their life that they feel they now need a bigger unit. Um, if they want to move them from two rivers, say to Sakasarani, where you have another project, that's, there's another flexibility. Again, say within the same uh, developer. So there's that, there's that option if you're choosing to, to buy. Again, ESG, um, this is environmental sustainability and governance. I mean, this is sustainability and governance. This is becoming a very, very, increasingly becoming a very big um, factor. I mean, globally, we, we can all see what's happening with uh, global warming, and I think we all have a role to play in this. So you'll find developers increasingly are um, moving towards applying green, green standards and uh, things like edge in their construction, especially depending on where you raise funds. So increasingly, you'd find that um, there are some investors who would not put money in projects that are not compliant, say, to ESG. Um, so if you buy then, you know at least you're buying a house that is energy efficient, uh, is water efficient, and built with sustainable materials. Okay, so that's that's an option that you'd probably uh, choose to go with, I mean, and benefit from. Uh, moving on. Okay, um, so that's, that's if you choose to, to purchase. Again, what are the options that you have? If say you've decided that you're going with a purchase option, you'd be looking at mostly two options, obviously. Uh, there's the off plan and where you come and get a ready built house. Um, the, the off plan way, um, obviously it's more risky uh, with this because you have to see the finished product, but potentially more lucrative um, in terms of the capital gains that you gain because then the developers will normally start at a lower price and then escalate the prices as construction progresses. Um, there's also flexibility uh, because depending on the project, um, say if it's not really high dense, well, the misconception is if you purchase, you don't have a say in some of the finishes that you get. But actually, if you come in early, there's that um, option to come and negotiate with the developer and say, maybe this is the kind of tile finish I want. Um, would you probably tweak my kitchen layout to maybe look in a certain way? And then the payment, so there's that flexibility. So however much building gives you more flexibility, there's still that option to get maybe a flow and colors uh, that you want if you come in the offline uh, stage. And then in terms of purchasing, 
um, you have more time to pay for your unit during the construction period. Um, this is if you are paying within the, the milestones with the off plan. Again, um, the other advantage again with the off plan, you also get to get um, monthly progress update. Obviously, as a buyer, you don't to probably match the payments that you're making to the construction progress at site. Um, you can get that, like at least we do like monthly newsletters to buyers, we show them photos and then we tell them when they can expect to see their house and the big milestones that you have achieved in the month. For a ready house, I mean, this is more safe. Um, if you talk to NCBA, probably purchasing of the mortgage would be much quicker because uh, the asset, I mean, the unit is already complete. And then depending on your needs as a buyer, say you've just moved into the country or you've changed your jobs, I mean, the house is ready for you to, to occupy. Um, moving on. Okay, um, so within the purchasing option, what are some of the pitfalls that one could avoid? I think um, the first one would be when you see buyers come to us, they are really, really mostly concerned on the commercial terms of, of the project. So by this, I mean, they would be really keen on the price and the rental yield that um, they would get. And that's what they really, really push us on, probably negotiate on the price. And I think would, it should also be important for buyers to just familiarize themselves on the options that they have within the legal documentations that they sign. Uh, so the first one would be say like an offer letter. I mean, what, what does the signing of the offer letter mean? I mean, what, what do you expect from the developer? And then what options do you have if say certain things are not done? Again, the, to the next stage of the say the lease document, I'll, I'll talk on the purchase process later. So rather than just look at the price and say the expected rent, that's something that buyers could familiarize themselves with on the legal process and the documentation. Again, due diligence. Um, Sometimes they say if it's too good, too good to be true, probably it's too good to be true. Um, just also just do a due diligence. Um, so if the price is too good, again, it would be helpful to just compare. Um, and an, an easier way of doing this is taking the price and then dividing it by the size of the unit. So by that, we then get a sales per square meter rate, which you can easily compare with other developments because at least that's the one figure that you'll find in all brochures. So. If then the, the unit that you're purchasing is really, really far off, um, you should probably just want to see why. Maybe the developer has certain technological advantages that enable them to do that. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but that could be a good place to start. Again, going back to that uh, point on the developer's track record, again, this is uh, quite important. You can even visit the sites and the previous projects that uh, they have done. Um, if you have a lawyer, or if you think you could also do it on yourself, you are also allowed to say, ask for a copy of the title. You go and perform the search and see whether the developer is also the person say who owns the land. And say if they've broken ground, that means that project has things like the name approval. At that point, you can also see the profile of the contractor because they are on site. And actually these are mostly put, if the construction is going on, you normally see a boat just outside the project. And at least you can ask around and see previous jobs that these uh, people have done. You can even just one request for these things uh, from the site. This is something that you're allowed to do. Um, just to make sure you, you know, you're know you working with people who have a track record of delivering. Um, it would also be good for, say, buyers to familiarize themselves with the terminology in, in the brochures. So sometimes I would say a unit is 90 square meters, um, but what, what would the 90 be? So there's the square meters, then if you convert it to say the square feet, it gives a larger number, say by about 10 point something, so that, that would be about 900 uh, square feet. Again, you probably ask whether it's the carpet area or it's the built up area, because this, this makes a difference. So the carpet area is within the walls of, of your building. Um, so just ask, even if they say it's a built up area, probably that, that's fine, but at least you don't expect a 90 square meters and then there's four meters of walling just taking up your space when you occupy the space. And this is mostly say for off plan. So sometimes it'd be good if you visit a show house, just for you to familiarize yourself with the, with the un, unit and the efficiency in the design. Um, because say if I take the 90 square meters example, um, and then you had previous, say previously visited a friend and they have a house and they tell you it's also 90 square meters. Um, the architects also tell you probably how the space has been utilized between the two units could be different. So 
just don't always go for site. Uh, for the size, if you visit the show house and then you see you like the space and how the utilization has been done, probably that would be a better um, way to go about it. Uh, moving on. Again, the other one is on amenities. And I think a big one here is, is parking. Um, parking is especially safe for an apartment building. Generally, a parking bay would cost, if it's say a basement parking, close to 1.2 million on average uh, to construct. So it's a very expensive um, amenity. So depending on the type of house you're buying. So you'd find that, say, for the more affordable units, again, say, mostly targeted at, say, the investor market, um, the parking ratio would probably not be one to one. But if the developer is upfront about it and then there are ways, say, it's, say, near public uh, transport, so maybe you'd have more of the users using the public access, um, the public transport system, probably that's that's a good way to go about it. But if, say, it's it's been sold as to have a dedicated parking, um, say within the more high-end units. So if you're looking at units of 20 million and above, you probably want to have um, this included in the senior lease documentation, just, just to ensure you're covered on that um, aspect. Again, you say there are things like pools, probably want to also have that. So there's a section within the leases where then they will describe the building. So again, we we'll probably want to also have that included there. Um, so that, there are no surprises uh, later on. Again, um, a big one is the management company and service charge. Probably just ask what their target service charge would be. Because, I mean, you don't want to look at that you're buying a house and then you end up paying a very, very high service charge compared to whether it's a, an affordable house or a more high-end house. Again, if you probably visit the developers, say, previous projects, you'd see things that they've done um, within the MEP installation, such as lifts. Again, you really want to have, say, things like lifts that can be serviced locally, uh, because once the developer sells the house, remember they leave, then be left uh, dealing with that. So those are just some of the things that you could look out for. Um, moving on. Um, just in summary, a typical purchase process for, so this, this, this gives, a, this assumes an off-plan uh, purchase, say within a 24 month period. Um, so of course you'd go, um, have the developer show you the site if there's construction progress ongoing. Again, you go uh, choose the, see the site. Then they would probably give you a schedule of all the units that are still yet said to be um, unsold. Then you'd pick a unit. Uh, again, then you'd really note the unit number because then when they send the offer letter, it would say this is unit number, say five on floor six, um, for example. Then at that point, generally, again, this, this could vary. You could probably pay a 10% deposit as you give your KIC documents, say the things like your PIN and the ID. Um, again, at, at our next stage, you then sign um, an agreement for lease, because it's not at a lease, because the house is still under construction. Then you probably have about 14 to 30 days, depends on the developer, where you then pay another 10%. Now then, the other uh, payments could be, say, done quarterly. Again, remember, if it's a good developer, they're sending you monthly updates on the progress. So even as you make the payments, you're trying to track how the progress of the construction is going. Then obviously at completion, you clear all the costs. And depending on how long registration of the lease will take, if the house is complete and there's a, say, an occupation certificate or an architect's occupation certificate, we then be able to take the house as the lease registration is, is, is going. But this could change slightly. Um, Again, depending on the developer or if the house is already uh, finished, which could be a very shorter time because the asset is ready. Um, yeah, I think um, that that would be it. I think we'll take Q&A um, later. But Philip, I'll hand it over back to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kiario, for that great presentation. And uh, again, indeed, for demystifying the various advantages of purchasing versus building. And, and enlightening our viewers this morning on the factors to consider in home selection. And of course, again, also the pitfalls to avoid as well as um, the purchase process. To our viewers this morning, please feel free to send in your comments or questions um, using the chat box um, on Facebook, and then of course, YouTube, um, uh, the comment section, and we'll be glad to respond to those questions as just like uh, Mr. Kiari has, um, confirmed. On to our second uh, panelist for today. Our second panelist for today is uh, Ms. Emma Miloyo, who is an architect and partner at Design Source. 
Em, of course, is a practicing architect with vast experience in building industry in the East and Central Africa region. She graduated from Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology with a first class honors in architecture. Need I remind you the first woman to do so? She was the first female president of Architectural Association of Kenya and was recognized as one of top 40 under 40 women in Kenya in 2011 and 2018 by National Media Group's Business Daily. Emma is indeed a co-author um, of Building in Kenya, a real estate developer's toolkit, and she's equally the co-founder of Women in Real Estate, abbreviated as WIRE. I hope I've pronounced it correctly, Emma. With that brief introduction, I would like to invite Emma to engage us in this discussion. Take it away, Emma. She's on mute. Emma, kindly unmute your mic, if you don't mind. We seem to have lost Emma, if I'm not wrong. Perhaps you'd um, allow me to jump to our third panelist today, who is, um, we'll come uh, back to I cannot hear you, Dennis, sorry about you that. Can... Um, All right. Okay. No, I can hear you, sorry. Um, okay. Just a connection right. problem. Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, intro. I'm really excited to be here and it's wonderful listening to Lawrence. Um, just elaborating on, on just the process of buying and the, what you have to think about. Uh, of course, I'm an architect, and as, as has been stated, and uh, I have uh, also co authored a book um, called Building in Kenya, which really is an so I'll be looking at things from the building perspective that's shared with us. So moving on um, to the slides. Hello. Please proceed, Emma. Yes, and um, I think as, as has been stated by the previous panelists, um, and real estate is really sound investment. It is one of the best investments you can make. It's solid. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, ma'am, loud and clear. Great. So I was just saying that uh, as it has been Great. I was saying that uh, building is uh, and, and, and real estate investment is really one of the most sound investments anyone can make, um, as has been elaborated by the previous um, um, panelists. So it's certainly uh, to the viewers, you're in the right place. Now, the question comes how to invest, and there are various ways of uh, putting your money um, um, into real estate. The question comes, and if we could move on to this the next slide, you have to ask yourself, what's my what's my status? What's my personality? Because um, those will play such a factor in whether you're going to buy or build. And and we 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 usually have these interesting um, um, personality types that I'll I'll put there before you. Uh, four types, and maybe the viewers can then see where they fit themselves in. And we've given them names. So if you can move on, um, we've got our first person is called. She's called Aisha. Aisha um, likes doesn't have an eight to five job. If we can move on to the slide, the next slide actually. Yes, she's always loved managing projects. She likes working with teams, um, and she sees building as a great investment opportunity. 
and she'd like to maybe put up 15 units or her own uh, building on a plot of land that she's recently inherited. She's never built anything before and she's a bit intimidated by the horror stories she has had. She's run other businesses before and, uh, and she's happy to take on learning, but she's asking herself, how do I start? What should I expect? Is real estate really a viable investment and should I build? We can move on to the next personality. Stanley, we have Stanley, he, he lives a stress-free life. He values education and he thinks life is too short, you know, and he just wants to live and let live. He's rented the same one bedroom apartment for the last five years. And then recently, you know, started a Mpesa kiosk and his, his mates keep on asking him, when are you going to build? You're not serious. You're not a serious Kenyan if you've not done a Mjengo. But he's asking himself, what is the opportunity cost? And how does he tip his, dip his toe in this type of investment without getting burned. Moving on. Moving on, we've got Njoki. You know, she's been renting a three-bedroom three apartment. She's a single mom. Uh, and she really wants to focus on her child as well. She has a, a nine to five, but she also thinks that, you know, she's giving her landlord too much money and paying towards an asset that will eventually not be her own. And it makes sense for her to buy, but, Building is off the table for her because the bandwidth to manage such a project she does not have. So she she needs to understand what are what's the money best money sense loan rates out there. What investment returns should she expect, and how should she confidently go through this process? So yeah, I, that's just Stanley, Joki, and Aisha are uh, sort of a synopsis of the kind of person uh, maybe one of our viewers identifies might identify with. And that's a fundamental question you must ask yourself. Who am I before I decide to invest in, in, in real estate? Um, do I want the hustle of uh, going through uh, a building process? And I think Lawrence did a very elaborate um, explanation of all the things you have to think about, all the things that the headaches that you have to go through. Um, and then also, um, what's your situation in life? Eh? Um, if you can move on. I move on again, sorry, again. So you must ask yourself, why, what, and who am I? Eh? Um, and why do I want to put money in, in, in real estate? If you can move on. Those are the fundamental questions. Who am I? No, before that. Who am I? What? How? And why do I want to put money in real estate? Why do I want to invest? Those then will be able to, once you answer these questions, um, you're able then to decide, is building the option for me or is buying the option for me? And that's why those little person, those personality types that we've outlined there um, help to answer those questions. Um, if you have an H, an H to five job, then taking on a building project may not be the most ideal uh, um, uh, project for you right now because building and supervision of building is a time consuming and money consuming uh, um, endeavor. Why am I building? Am I building or buying because of peer pressure or, or um, you know, like Njoki there, looking for some security for her child? Um, like Aisha there is looking to reap some benefit from real estate investment. Then when you've answered those two, then the what and how become very easy um, um, and, and, and in making that decision. If you can move on. So Njoki is probably someone looking for shelter. She's looking for the security and there's no, uh, I think COVID has shown us that. There's almost, it's almost priceless, the value of having a roof over your head. That can almost not be put, a price tag cannot be put uh, on that. And maybe that's why when Stella was, I mean, uh, earlier on, in, uh, um, I think there was a discussion and seeing how um, actually, the investment in real estate increased during COVID times. Um, even furniture sellers said everybody was doing home improvements because the more you sat in that room staring at four walls is when you realize the importance of shelter. There was a lot of instability around uh, jobs and therefore people had to downscale a lot. And people started thinking, you know, if I had a roof over my head, at least um, this 
other factor that is a variable in terms of my living expenses, those are things I can think about. But rent became such a burden on people when they were getting half their pay or people being, uh, you know, um, made redundant at their workplaces. So if shelter is a, a reason why you're building, that's, that's very important. And I think um, uh, the shift in bio-built question became very clear during COVID time. Are you doing it for brand? Um, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, someone's about to launch a political career. Someone looks uh, at what have you put up? Yeah? What have you built? Uh, so some people do it for brand. I mean, um, does it meet my needs uh, is a question. Um, if you're doing it like Aisha for a you know, return on investment, what are the returns? What, what is most viable for me? Um, and therefore, you may not be looking necessarily at the same questions of uh, proximity to you know, certain places because um, for yourself, but you're looking at the whole ecosystem of real estate development and seeing where is where are people reaping most return? In what kind of real estate investment? Moving on. And even to the next one. So when you've answered those questions, it becomes very clear to see, so what type of building are you going to do? Are you doing it for long-term? Um, uh, in investment in terms of pension and, and this you can either build or actually buy. You can buy many units if you're, if you're looking at um, um, putting in something for, for the future and where you'll have capital gains. Are you doing it for self-actualization? This is sort of the key scenario where you, you know you don't want to rent anymore. You want a shelter uh, over your face. Are you doing for ego and brand, um, you know, prestige and self-actualization? You know, the mama I have made it type of building, you know? Are you doing for high short-term income, um, quickly, uh, you, you know, uh, getting money and a quick back out? And a lot of people have even gone into interesting uh, type of investments in this uh, in this regard. Sometimes it's not owning at all. There are many ways to also put in, uh, you know, to invest uh, without necessarily having to buy or build. And we're looking at REITs which have come into the market, so you're still a player in the real estate market, but you're not necessarily having to you know, own a building as it were. Um, moving on. So the bio build, and I think uh, Lawrence did a very good uh, summary of, uh, of all this in terms of what are the pros and cons. Uh, and, and for me, I've learned on the side of who are you that then drives wh whether I should buy or build. And maybe on the build side, because I think um, um, Lawrence was able to elaborate a lot on the buy side. But on the build side, um, what are the advantages of building? You can easily customize your, your development to suit you. Um, this, despite the app cost, front, uh, cost being very high, it, it's easier to recoup the investment. Eh? A new home is likely to also have, you know, uh, you know certain you know, potential for you to be able to build an environmentally friendly building. Um, and there's generally a lot of satisfaction after you've gone through the process of managing your contractor and your architect. There's also a lot of emotional connection to a building that you have decided, where will the kitchen be? This is, you know, uh, my child's uh, bedroom. This is a study. Um, and uh, in a way you get some savings, some savings that maybe you would have paid for the headache. You'd have paid a developer to cover all those um, um, headaches. For example, approvals, you have to go through that with your architect, supervising the architect, the same that Lawrence elaborated. There is a cost to that, that the developer puts on the project, but um, by you building on your own, you're able to save that. But do you have the time to save that is a big question usually. Do you have the time to put in that, uh, uh, that a, a developer would put in for you and charge you uh, for that? So that's a big question. If you can move on. So generally looking, what's when you've decided to build, because uh, um, I will be speaking a little bit about the building, what is, you know, whether you're building for a roof over your head, like we said, in Jockey, or whether you're putting up something for investment, you know, the high capital return, looking for, you know, your pension or something that will, you know, take you through, uh, you know, uh, times ahead and, and, and give you supplementary income. Um, there are several stages and, one is a conceptualization. What type of project am I doing? Why am I doing it? There's a feasibility study, very important. You know, If you're putting up apartments uh, for sale or for rent, doing a bit of market research. Lawrence talked about that. Location, location, location. Financially, you know, not just going in blind and saying I have uh, 5 million here. I think I can put this in. You have to do the math. Um, 
put in, you know, we say it a lot, measure twice and cut once because real estate is expensive and you don't want to make a mistake. Uh, and even if you're going through a buying process, doing your due diligence is similar to sort of uh, uh, measuring twice. Eh? Doing your due diligence of the developer, uh, doing your due diligence and seeing uh, which is the best option to pay back my loan. And even if you're borrowing for building, NCB, NCB and uh, also give construction loans, looking at that, what's 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 in it for? Uh, what kind of model will suit me? And and what amount of interest am I paying? And what am I reaping from that? Um, so that's a very important stage. I've circled the, the, there in yellow um, because Palato's rule of 80-20, spent 80% of your time doing the planning, doing your, your, your working through with your, uh, working the numbers before now you get into a uh, stage three, which is pre-development. Yeah? Um, depending on what kind of project you're doing, we're talking about six to 12 months, uh, talking to your architect, getting your architects. And our book, uh, Building in Kenya, has a lot of, in, goes into in-depth of all the stages. How do you get your architect? Where, how do you do your due diligence on, a, on an architect, on a structural engineer? Why do I need a structural engineer? Um, and then looking at structure, statutory approvals. Um, having an understanding of this uh, when you're building is very important and not leaving it to your professionals to to sort of uh, do everything for you. You have to be hands-on when you're building. If you do not want to be hands-on, then please buy it because building has to be hands-on or you will burn your fingers. Um, and then you get into the next stage, which is actually development, looking at which contractor will build my project eh? and doing a bit of due diligence on that. What's the workmanship? Um, are they uh, registered by NCA? Um, do they have, you know, what kind of work have they done before? Uh, talking to clients who've worked with a contractor and finding out what's a working relationship because you can have all the technical um, uh, capabilities, but are you a good person to work with? And sometimes uh, the process of building can be very, very um, tough and you will get into run-ins with your contractor uh, and, and having someone who can, you can work well with, it's really, really um, will save you a lot of, a lot of headache. If you're putting up for rent and sales and looking at the marketing side of things um, and uh, I know if you're going to keep that, then uh, keep those apartments or if you're if it's your own building, just thinking about what's the life cycle of my building? How will I maintain it? So those are generally like the five stages um, of the building process and property development process that you need to think about. Uh, the book goes into much more in depth, uh, even before this, in terms of uh, buying your land and what you need to think about in terms of the due diligence on that part. So moving on, that's a, a, you know like really just a summary and a sub snapshot of the building. Um, all these uh, are, are, are aspects in terms of emerging issues. I, I don't really need to go that into that. But if you are going into property development, then there are many ways. If you own land, there are very many uh, uh, you know investment uh, models that you can get into. There's emerging issues around COVID and 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 people really getting more keen on having a roof over their head especially in the residential space, we've seen a lot of interest. Um, you know, uh, people who had put forward and said, I'm going to build in so many years, have brought that forward because uh, the need for security just became that much more um, important during COVID. And this is, you know, the conversation around affordable housing, it's still um, a hot topic. And there's a lot of opportunities, even when you're looking at buying to invest or buying as not uh, not owner occupied. There are very many uh, you know units out uh, being put out in the market. I think Centum has uh, quite a number, and and it's really just look, look what are the emerging trends. There's also emerging trends around a Airbnbs and short stays because people are not traveling out of the country as much as they used to. So looking at um, um, you know uh, the, the, uh, staycations as they call them. So those are those are very interesting uh, emerging issues that um, have have come. Um, Moving on, um, at some more uh, emerging issues, but I, I won't even go into that. But we can go to the next. We can go into the next slide. So before you proceed, you know you must ask yourself some fundamental questions. I won't read through all of them, but I've talked about uh, planning and thinking through and spending eighty percent of the time planning and running your numbers and 20% in execution, uh, looking at the risks, seeing how to mitigate those risks, uh, doing your research, reading. This is the most important investment you will make. Read, equip yourself, 
uh, I, I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir because all of you on this webinar, you know, attend webinars, there's so many now, um, do an online course, uh, understand the market uh, before you jump in. Huh? Moving on. So is buying new suits better? Um, then there, there are certain things you need to also think about. And I think Lawrence had elaborated on this. I will not dwell too much on them. Um, but are you buying, if you can move on, are you buying to reside or are you buying to let out? The co considerations are very different when it's owner occupied, you know, or you're buying as an investment. Um, I, do, you have, do you trust and have confidence in the developer if you're buying? Have you done your due diligence? Have you seen the projects they've delivered? And I think, um, you know, when we're talking about uh, uh, off plan, that's very fundamental. If you're gonna do something off plan, um, you you need to then look at that. Uh, I Can I trust my developer? Yeah? And the finance options, which uh, NCBA, uh, uh, of course, have the answers to. Moving on. So reasons to buy a home when you have steady income, because if you're gonna look for financing, um, then that's very fundamental. Um, if you, you know, do you have uh, the equity? Are you feeling ready? And reasons why you shouldn't buy or build is because of peer pressure, because everybody's buying a, an apartment in Kililesha or Kilimani. You also want to do the same. Uh, just what suits me um, is the type of money I have and what I'm thinking about is a, a different location better for me. Um, if I have already, already a lot of debt, um, maybe I shouldn't be getting into more debt, yeah? Um, and and look, look look at that, uh, those, those those scenarios. I think we're, I'm coming to the end and if you can move on. So real estate investment in itself is like we said, is uh, and, and, and all the panelists have repeated, is a sound investment. Um, everyone should do it without fail, you know? Um, but you must dream it. You must design a strategy. You must be determined and have some discipline. Um, I think discipline goes a long way in be able to save up um, if you're putting in any down payments um, um, and, uh, and even discipline if you're building uh, and, and, and ensuring your, you've done your due diligence uh, and got enough information and equipped yourself with the information. So even as I conclude, I just wanted to share also, uh, if you move on to the next slide, um, what are people doing uh, as they're building and uh, putting up, um, you know, for the high capital site type of uh, uh, investment? And we're looking at, um, if you can move on, please. Where are people putting up? And we've got a lot of uh, movement in Raqqa and Kikuyu area, uh, Sindigwa, Siokimau, Gong, Tengela, Athi River, Ruiru and Rogai. The outskirts, if you're looking to, uh, to, to, know, to sort of invest, maybe not necessarily owner occupy, there's a lot of uh, you know, uh, return on investment. Um, and you can look at uh, rental yield. If you're putting up for rent, uh, then you can see the ones with the highest yield are the Rwaka area, maybe because of two rivers. Uh, Kikuyu is also looking very good because of their infrastructure and the Southern Bypass. Um, In terms of listening to me, uh, I'm wishing you all the best in your Django journey, as we call it. If you can go to the next slide, and um, just encouraging everybody to equip themselves uh, by the Building in Kenya book. If you haven't yet already, it's um, and and for everyone on the on the uh, looking at you know watching this uh, webinar this morning, we will have a free delivery um, if you buy this book on raffle.com. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma, for providing an outlook on the different personas. Uh, um, and again, to just help us understand that whichever side you lean on, whether new or old, you need to look at important things like due diligence, location, and investment opportunities to help you choose what you go for. Don't just buy because um, you want to satisfy your ego. Don't just buy because everyone is uh, buying properties around this location buy what you feel um, uh, suits you. And that is what is within your budget. And that also goes for construction as well. Again, also thank you for amplifying. 
um, the importance of due diligence in both buying and construction um, uh, projects. And of course, also for emphasizing the importance of working with qualified and experienced professionals that would guide you through the mortgage process. Uh, we've, we're, we're already receiving questions which will attend to at, uh, the, at the tail end of this webinar. And um, to our viewers who've just joined us, uh, would like to encourage you to use the Facebook chat box to um, uh, send in your questions and those on YouTube, please feel free to use the comment section. On to our last panelist and speaker for today. Um, our last speaker today is uh, Stella Mutai. Stella is the head of property fine head of property finance at NCBA Bank, and um, she has um, over ten years experience uh, leading and contributing um, to mortgage diaspora banking, retail banking, innovation, sales and marketing, and of course, uh, this of course covers local, regional, and diaspora markets. Did I say Stella is um, a graduate, um, an MBA graduate? Um, uh, in strategic man management option. And she also has a Bachelor of Arts in Communication from Daystar University. She equally has um, a postgraduate a diploma in project management from Kenya Institute of Management. And she's a certified uh, marketer. Um, and in addition to her profile, um, she has professional diploma in marketing from McKinney. She's equally a full member of Kenya Institute of Management and a member of Women in Real Estate. Stella, having understood what it takes to either build or buy, um, as enumerated by our two speakers for today, please just lend it to perspective around property financing at NCBA. Go for it, Stella. Thank you. Thank you, Philip, and good morning, viewers. My name is Tana Mutai, Head of Property Finance at um, NCVA, and uh, I'm glad to be joined by Lawrence and Emma, and they've been able to unpack this topic uh, very well on uh, buy or build, the big debate. And I know we usually have these questions in our groups, should I buy, should I build? And I'm glad that uh, Lawrence was able to unpack, should I buy? And Emma has already unpacked on, should I build? And uh, we've been able to look at quite a number of factors and, and one thing that uh, NCBA that we do is that uh, we have products that are tailor-made for our customers to be able to acquire, to construct, if you want to if you want to buy, if you want to construct, we're able to do that. And we understand the customer's needs. One thing that you notice is that customers have got different type of needs. So everybody has the different type of needs and that this has been alluded to by Emma, uh, why people need to be able to own property. And one thing that you notice is that property in ownership is a dream that remains elusive for many Kenyans. And um, there are many factors that have caused this. One of them is being the high cost of land, high cost of construction, high cost of properties. And you find that if, for instance, if I wanted to buy a property within my budget, you find maybe I have to buy outside, maybe in Nairobi and in Nairobi and Barons. So that makes it very expensive for me. And these are some of the factors that have made it uh, difficult for Kenyans or some people to be able to own properties. However, at NCBA, we advance loans to be able to purchase assets that you, as a customer, would not be able to buy. Um, it could not, maybe you as a customer or someone who is looking into getting into NCB as a customer, we advance loans to acquire assets that you could not be able to buy. Uh, if you want to use frauds, um, uh, if, because one thing that we know is that a home is one of the biggest investments that we ever to be able to make in life. The ultimate uh, purpose of uh, NCBA property finance is to help our customers optimize the use of their income and resources and to be able to actualize their, their goals at different stages of life. Uh, I know I know Lawrence was able to mention the different stages that people go through and uh, to be able to summarize them, we usually have the, the accumulation stage or the building stage whereby I'm building my wealth and this is the time people are thinking I need to buy, I need to build, or if you're looking at consolidation or retirement, whereby you're looking at, I need to be able to get some income upon my retirement. So we are able to work with our customers at different types, uh, different stages. And we always tell our customers, don't shy away. You know, whatever stage you are, you've just cleared campus, you just uh, maybe started your first job, maybe you're on contract at NCBA, we're able to finance you. And, and when, when buying a property, there are so many things that we're able to consider. And, and one thing that 
to always say it's location, location, location. Location is very is very important or is very imperative when you're buying a property because you ask yourself, will I be able to access amenities? Will my children be able to access maybe school? Are there any schools before even I, I buy this property? So buying property should be relatively straightforward. However, there are pitfalls that we, we need to, to avoid and we advise our customers always to engage professionals before signing on that dotted line. If at all you're buying uh, a house, if at all you're buying a piece of land, we are able to make sure that you are able to read that sale agreement, engage professionals, engage a surveyor, engage a lawyer, engage a value. And this, even, even, even though you're buying a property, also ensure that you're even um, engaging a registered certified realtor. Um, uh, they have to be registered. And it comes to building, it's also imperative to engage professionals like architects, uh, quantity surveyors, structural engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, and uh, so as they can be able to guide you. And for these, they have to be registered with the relative, um, with, with the uh, relevant uh, bodies like um, like Borax. They need to be able to be registered by Architectural Association of Kenya. And there's so many bodies that register these professionals. And one will ask, uh, does NCBA have products? that suits uh, these categories of customers, if at all I'm buying or building? The answer is yes, we have an array of products that you as a customer can be able to select when you're buying. When you're buying, we have our home loan whereby we finance our customers up to 105% financing. And the reason why we have our 105% financing is that we realize our customers, maybe many people want to be able to get into property ownership, but they don't have the closing costs. You find that uh, when you're purchasing a property, there's so many costs that are involved uh, in, in, in property purchase, like stamp duty, there's legal fees, the valuation, there's deposit. And so we, we, we launched this product to be able to take away the burden from, from our customers. And we offer 105%, whereby we pay the stamp duty, we pay the legal fees as well as a deposit. So for you as a customer, all oh, what you need to be able to look at is where am I buying this property? Then we also have, when you're buying, we have our plot, plot purchase if you want to buy a piece of land. Um, I know we are very interested. Um, uh, we, we are peculiar people, Kenyans, we are very peculiar because we we look we like owning properties. Uh, at NCBA, we're able to finance purchase of, of, of plots and what you call also land. And uh, we as long as the property is um, in between 40 by 80, what is uh, an eighth to 2.5 acres, we're able to finance our customers. And if you are looking into building, we are also have solutions for our customers if they want to be able to build. We have a construction facility. Uh, this construction facility is whereby you as a customer, you come up with your own team. You put together your team of architects, you put together a team of quantity surveyors, uh, in mechanical and structural engineers. You put all these service or professionals together so as they can be able to, call, to, to guide you or even to be able to follow through the process for you. And then for NCB, will be able to finance you. We also have a very interesting solution, which you call buy and build. And buy and build is, is a product whereby you are buying a piece of land and simultaneously constructing. So you, you, you've you got a piece of land somewhere, maybe within uh, Nairobi and its environs, even outside Nairobi, it could be in Mombasa, Nakuru, Kakamega, or even Kericho. We are able to finance our customers to be able to buy that piece of land and you simultaneously construct your house, depending on your taste and preferences and then our latest offering and, and, and that we have is NCBA Easy Build. And the reason why we have the NCBA Easy Build is because we realize that our customers are looking for solutions, they're looking for an easy way out. Um, I have a day job, I have a eight to five. Um, I'm in business, uh, um, I'm running other errands, and I don't have time to be able to supervise my projects. So we came up with this product whereby as we are offering professionals, um, offering professionals and as well as financing and off the shelf designs that you as a customer can be able to select. So NCBA uh, Easy Build is all about creating you know, convenience for you. Uh, offering, as I've mentioned, a one-stop shop for, for construction and we finance up to 100% financing. We provide a construction team and the construction team that you are, we, are, we, are, 
we we are providing or what you are calling a consortium. It's composed of an architect, it's composed of engineers, it's composed of a quantity surveyors, and these professionals will be able to hard hold you to be able to go into your construction. This means that you'll be able to focus on your day job and and then also know that your project is progressing very well. In addition to this product, we have um, we have negotiated um, some some discounts with uh, cement companies, whereby we're able to offer concession to our customers. That hence you find that um, if, for instance, I was to construct a house today, maybe going for ten million. See, once you take up NCBA, is it you do find that you're able to save on one or two closing costs? You're able to save on materials because as NCBA, we realize the need or what our customers are looking for. And this is all based on the feedback that we've got from our customers. That one thing that they're looking for is convenience. They are looking for seamless or hassle-free products or something, someone who can be able to handhold them and to be able to be able to construct. So where would someone think of where do you think I need to be able to get into NCBA Easy Build? One thing that is NCBA Easy Build allows you to focus on the on the important aspects of your life such as spending time with your family, growing your business, and also growing your career. One, the, the second thing, it has reduced cost of home ownership. You're able to construct according to your taste and preferences. If you want to have some trendy colors, trendy designs, you're able to take it up. And then also it offers a bit to be able to control on the quality and also check on one or two things that you needed maybe to, to have in your, pro, in your project. Then uh, for this uh, in NCBA Easy Build, you're giving our customers a nine months uh, period whereby you construct your house. And at this, when you're doing your construction is that uh, we, we, you don't pay interest. You just, you just you don't, you pay interest on the money that has been dispersed and we disperse the money in stages. So the reason why we got into this product is because we realized our, there's so many complications or there's so many uncertainties that come, comes with, um, with, with construction uh, in, in our next slide whereby many people ask themselves, there's so many complexities. How, who is going to follow up on my approvals? Who is going to get, uh, who is going to put together for me all these third parties? So we are taking away this burden from our customers and we're say, telling our customers, one thing, we, we have a team that is going to run around for you uh, when it comes to approvals at the counties, if it is NEMA, if it is NCA, National Construction Authority, we have somebody who is able to be able to work with you. If all this the number of uh, third parties, there are so many we brought them together for you or what you need to do is just to have a conversation with them have your concept or conceptualize what you're looking at and they will be able to guide you then advice will be able to get a uh, technical advice and the, the team is going to be able to guide to guide you on what it is all about so that's about uh ncba easy build which is a very exciting product and um i would encourage as many people as possible you might be having that piece of land somewhere that you're thinking how do i need to go about it do i need to offer do do I need to construct? Do I need to buy? I believe today we've been able to unpack on the solution or, or, or the best way or what you need as a customer to be able to take. Um, up, up next slide, please. Uh, we've mentioned why we need to be able to have a, 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 a easy build, uh, why we have easy build for you. Uh, next. And maybe I can be able to mention the benefits why you need people to take up uh, maybe facilities at uh, at NCBA one. Um, we we look at very at various sources of income. You could be in employment, and employment you're talking about either you are you are, you are permanent or you're on contract. You're able to finance uh, anybody who is uh, having a, a, a source of income, a salary. You could be having a rental income. You could be in consultancy. We are able to finance. You could be in business. We're able to look at your income and able to finance you. And then our max. Maximum tenure period of financing, we finance up to 25 years, and you can be able to choose um, uh, to choose a period that, that suits you very well. But we advise our customers to take the longest period, and once you take the longest period, you're able to take care of uncertainties that come with life. Then uh, there's no penalty for putting in them some amount of money. We don't penalize our customers. If you want to put in them some amount of money, you can be able to do that. And, and uh, you don't have to be an existing customer for you to take up um, a mortgage or a property financial issue with NCBA. All what you need to be able to do is 
or kin to our to, to our to, to our to our to our branches. We have quite an, we have uh, 77 branches across across the country, and we'll be able to guide you, we'll be able to take away the burden to, um, for you. And and for that person who is looking at uh, maybe buying a property, we have um we have our property center whereby we display quite a number of properties, as well as also a property listing from vetted developers. One thing that we do is we onboard vetted developers so as to make it easier or seamless for our customers to be able to acquire property. So once you get a property from NCB, we will know very well that we have done a due diligence with them, though we will need to be able to do a further due diligence when you're going through the, the charging process. And, and also we have... Um, the property listings that we have, we also have our uh, in, in, in form of virtual tours. We initially had bus tours, but due to COVID, we had to think about our customers and we have put together all these properties. So from the comfort of your seat, you're able to view all these property, properties that we have uh, in different locations, either Mombasa Road, it could be on in could be uh, um Vika Road or whichever, wherever you are looking for, wherever you're looking for a property, not, not only Nairobi, even outside Nairobi, we're able to finance. And um, we, we, have, uh, we have quite a number, we have a dedicated team uh, of relationship managers as well as property property team that is able to guide you all through. Then uh, when, when it comes to property, uh, one thing that we know, it's, it's not all gloom looking at the real estate industry and um, looking even within the, within the being, being in the pandemic, with the current pandemic, we've noticed increased activities uh, following um, uh, investor confidence. And as a bank that says go for it, and the numbers that matter to you matter to us, we are flexible in our, fle in, in our financing terms and location, and we'll work with you at every single step of your property ownership, whether you're buying or whether you're building, we'll be able to work with you and demystify the property ownership journey. Because one thing that we know that uh, we find that the property, people think that property ownership journey is very complicated, but it is not complicated because all what you need to be able to do is, for instance, if you get if you want to buy a property, walk into the bank, we'll be able to uh, appraise your income or analyze your income and advise that you qualify for X amount of money, you go look for a property, or if you've already got a property, we'll still be able to finance you. And the steps, these steps takes approximately, the whole process of the mortgage application takes approximately 90 days. And we are able to work with you at each stage. And some of these stages is the approval stage whereby we issue, uh, we issue, we approve a loan within a period of five days and issue a, we approve and issue um, offer letters within a period of five days. And once you get that offer letter, you're supposed to be able to accept the offer letter within 30 days. But it's not a must to stay with the offer letter for 30 days. You can be able to return the offer, uh, the offer letter within the shortest time possible. This, week, this makes it easier for us to be able to move pretty fast. Then we're able to move to the next stage, which is valuation. At valuation, we carry out. Um, we need to be able to know what is the what is the value of the property, as well as also get to know if the property uh, is encumbered. When it says it's encumbered, is does anyone have secondary rights to the property? Those are some of the things that we need to check, and also we also need to check if the property is within a repair and prop, uh, with repair and land or where where it is. We just need to be able to check on the location. Uh, once you that we've done evaluation, which takes approximately four days, we progress to to conveyancing or the legal process. And this is where we take the longest time in between 45 to 60 days. And for this is whereby we have a lawyer uh, in the panel, the bank's panel, who does the property registration as well as charging the property. So once the, the legal process is done, then we progress to the stage whereby we disperse and then you become the property owner. If you are, if you are constructing, you'll note that we will disperse the money in stages. We have what you call a drawdown schedule. And we tell our customers that uh, maybe a drawdown you could be having like maybe three to four stages whereby we, we're dispersing four stages and during construction you just be servicing the interest or or you'll be paying the interest of the money that has been dispersed so for us at um at ncba uh, because we say that uh, as a bank that says go for it and numbers that matter to you matter to us we are able to unpack all this uh the property ownership journey whether you're building or whether you're constructing thank you very much uh over to you philip um, thank you very much, Stella. And, and just to wrap up, um, I would like to invite um, our host to play a short video to enable us um, summarize what Stella has talked about regarding our wonderful product called Easy Build.
At NCBA Bank, we strive to offer the best solutions for our customers. NCBA Easy Build is our latest property financing solution that enables you to have access to building plans and full professional services so that you can build your house without stress. We have a pool of construction consultants comprising of architects, quantity surveyors, structural, mechanical and electrical engineers who will supervise your construction process end to end. As you construct a house, you can sit and relax knowing that our pool of experts will handhold you through the process. We also have pre-approved house designs to select from. With the NCBA Easy Build solution, you enjoy flexibility in selection of location, customization of your home to your specific tastes, preferences and lifestyle, flexibility in working within your budget, reduced cost of home ownership as it could be cheaper to build than to buy a house, quality control as we provide you with approved experts to build your house, instant property value appreciation upon completion. How to sign up for NCBA Easy Build? Step 1. Visit ncbagroup.com and go to the Borrow tab, then click Property and select Easy Build and view the house designs available. Select your preferred designs and submit your loan application alongside with your personal information. Step 2. We will review your application and if successful, approve the loan application for the house design with the indicated construction cost as advised by our construction consultants. Step 3. Valuation and conveyancing. Property is valued and charged to NCBA Bank. Step 4. Our approved construction consultants supervise the construction of your house and NCBA finances the project. Step 5. Move into your new home. NCBA Easy Build is a property financing solution that makes your construction process less taxing and making your journey to owning property easy. Visit ncbagroup.com today to apply and view the house designs available or inquire at your nearest NCBA branch. For queries, contact us via email propertycenter at ncbagroup.com or call us on 711 Amazing, amazing. Um, to our viewers, you feel free to reach us on the contact details provided. Um, that's um, on email, propertycenter at ncbagroup.com. And uh, just like Stella has um, enumerated, we are more than glad to share our current property listing. Um, I think one of the things that Stella really amplified is that uh, we have um, our monthly property listing from um, vetted developers and the listing has plots, uh, standalone houses, apartments, and um, amongst other types of units that are available for sale, actually including affordable housing units that we have listed therein. And we are more than glad to share this with you. So please feel free to leave your email um, on the chat box or you can just drop us um, a request uh, to do so um, at that point in time, and we'll be glad to share that. On to our Q&A session. I think, um, allow me to jump very quickly to Lawrence. Um, Lawrence, you mentioned something to do with cost per square meter or cost per square feet. For, for those who are interested in construction, how much would it cost typically to build a house in Kenya today? Please just break it down for us. And, and, and does the type of unit, e.g. a bungalow or a mansion that matter for those who are interested to build? Um, yeah, that's, that's a tricky one because there, there are various um, fact. Okay, let me, let me give an, a reason why. One reason could be the site conditions. Uh, so say I probably have, I'm assuming black cotton soil and then I have 
somebody else with maram soil, but then you'd realize that the foundation cost for this black cotton probably be much higher than the foundation cost for the maram soil, yet they are building the same size of house. I'm speaking, let's say, of a bungalow or a mash unit, but um, because I know you want a number, it would be anything between, um, if you're quite good, <laughs> anything between 25,000 all the way to even 50,000 if it's really, really high end. So depends on the quality of finishes um, that you'd have. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, Emma, um, I have a question here from Adina Grebo, Grebovich, um, that's on, on Facebook. She's asking, is it better to invest in commercial or residential property at the current marketplace? Um, thank you. Thank you for that question. A very valid one. And a reminder also about it's very dynamic um, and, and, and COVID has been, you know, uh, sort of the most impactful uh, uh, pandemic or situation that we've had in a long time. I think, uh, say for elections and uh, the 2008 financial crisis, uh, COVID has really impacted the market. And like I said earlier, I've made some shifts. And one thing that you you have to also, uh, like I uh, just want to reiterate, you have to be informed because um, in, uh, market shifts, um, even um, monthly, um, depending on situations, even as we're going into 2022, things will shift. So always being having your fingers on the pulse is very important. You could have done a feasibility st study or a market study one year ago, and then something happens that really disrupts the the uh the, the, the scene as it were so uh currently uh um, from the indications we're getting um commercial spaces are not doing very well uh, and it's pretty straightforward uh, people are working from home um uh, people are downsizing their office spaces business has been disrupted so a lot of people are uh you know everybody's working from home um so there's a lot of been there's been a lot of disruption in the commercial space whereas residential there's been a lot of movement because people are either downgrading from where they were living and therefore looking um, moving out of a villa into a, maybe a three-bedroom apartment or from a three-bedroom apartment in a certain area to something that's more affordable. So there's a lot of uh, movement in residential. Uh, so currently the market indicators uh, show that residential has not suffered a, a great a, a, as great a hit as commercial spaces have. Um, so if you look at um, the Haas index, it's always good to look at those, to look at the Cytone reports that are done every week and just see what are the indica indicators showing uh, in terms of all this space. Because like, we could say that now and in six months, there's a shift, you know, everybody's tired of being in the house and they all want to get back into the office. But currently, uh, that is a scenario. Residential is certainly looking uh, uh, better than commercial and a lot of commercial are starting to look at how, how then do they add value or uh, repurpose their commercial spaces to be able to uh, reap benefits. Thank you. Still on you, Emma. I think you mentioned something to do with the next frontiers in terms of where to invest and, and where we've seen traction in terms of uh, real estate development. So yeah, I think you mentioned something to do with Ruaka, Kikuyu, Kitengela and the rest. And I have a question tied to that from Stephen Muli on Facebook. Um, uh, he says, hi, based on what I've seen, most purchase options give 8% rate of return per annum. Is that the industry average? Um, well, 8% is a good return. Um, again, many factors uh, speak to that. Um, and again, it's very dynamic. Uh, so it really does depend um, on where you're buying and what you're buying. Um, and therefore, just looking at, um, like I said, those indexes that are published every so often to see how things shifted. Uh, because like I said before, something that is good to go right now uh, is three months from now because an expressway has passed through and changed the whole you know, scenery of that place can actually change the significantly. Or a mall has come up and now it's open. Um, so always keeping your your you know your fingers on the pulse is very important uh, but eight percent is a good return um, um uh, return on investment and um for the most part in residential when you're doing your numbers that you're doing for the make it work towards that so as you're putting your your input costs whether it's land whether it's professionals whether it's approvals uh whether it's the kind of finishes you're going to do just 
factor, factoring that in is very fundamental uh, when you're doing it for yourself or looking at even uh, developers who are putting it up. For example, Cyton are also in, playing in those areas now. It's very exciting to see the big developers, the big formal developers, a lot of the time the affordable housing space and uh, especially those in the suburbs was left to um, sort of uh, less formal developers, but we've seen um, Cyton among others get into uh, affordable housing space, which is really, really good because uh, the, 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 that is actually where you are bound to make the highest return is in those in, in that sort of area where people are not doing that. Sorry for brand, but people are actually, it's, it's, you know, providing a basic need and the demand will always be there for those kind of, in terms of rental yield, will always be there for those kind of uh, investments. Looking at, uh, it's really great to see the big formal developers getting into this one bedroom studio uh, space kind of scenario in, in Ruaka, in, I've seen some in Riruta, in Kasarani area, in Rongai area, uh, and sort of uh, uplifting and, uh, gentrification of these areas. So it's really exciting. So my answer is, um, it's about that, that's a good return. Uh, a lot of the formal developers will give you what they're projecting as a return. Um, and, and you can talk further with them as you're looking to invest. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Um, I think I have a question here for Lawrence. Um, uh, a gentleman called M. Joseph from YouTube is asking, if one needs to construct more than one, one, one home with shared amenities, what would be the role of each of these groups you mentioned? And in which order should one engage them? E.g., do I need to start from contractor to architect to developer or from architect, contractor to developer? Um, so are they purchasing or this is uh, through uh, development? I think I tend to think this question is more related to construction. So construction. I, I think, yeah, the viewer basically wants to know who should they engage first? Okay, um, ideally, um, um, they, they would probably start with the architect uh, because then they get to do a concept and then you know discuss with the architect, maybe this, this is what I want. Uh, they give the first uh, iteration, they give their comments. Um, then from the architect, then we are assuming they already have uh, the piece of land. So that's, that's not a factor. Then um, going back to Emma's point, once they get the designs, they can then engage a QS before you even go to a contractor because early on, before you do even the approvals, before you invest much more in the designs, you can be able to see how much it's going to cost you. Obviously there at some point, it's the full the design team, the architect, the structural engineer, and also the, the QS. So at that point, they then have an estimated budget for, for their project then they can go, if say they're just doing their own house, they can then go and look for two or three uh, contractors and then ask them to maybe give a bid or just to, to tell them, the contractors then tell him how much each of them is going to do the house for. So remember at this point, they can then share the designs from the architect and then have a big queue from the, the QS and the structural designs. And then the, the contract is able to price the building based on uh, the input from the uh, from the professional team from that from the from the designers yeah and then from the contractor they just finance him and then they they build and if i can just jump in as well yes please um and and, and i think lawrence has said assuming the person has land if you don't have land it's still very good before you buy land to engage your professionals and we've gone this in, in our book we've gone in depth in terms of the floor it's not only as linear but it's good even before you buy the land to engage in some way um, with professionals, whether it's your lawyer or your architect, so that when you're buying the land, uh, you already have a, a, a vision uh, and an input from a, an architect on whether it is suitable, even from a design perspective, for, uh, forgetting now for now market research, which we're assuming you've done, but you might find that the land is very steep and an architect will tell you, you know, look, this is gonna cost you more because um, the land is very steep or it has black cotton. So already getting some professional input uh, at a very early stage, even before you close on a on purchase of land would be also fundamental. So the earlier you get your professionals uh, on board, the better for you, even before you conceptualize what you're thinking about. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that input, Emma. Uh, I think this is to Stella on Easy Build. I have a question here from Annie Mudoni uh, from watching from on Facebook. 
for is for for the NCBA Isabel, do you also do do you also do a follow up on the approval process from relevant bodies, e.g., lands, offices, NEMA, etc. All right, thank you. Thank you for that question, uh, Mothoni. And, and what I can be able to say uh, for NCPA Easy Build, we are taking uh, the burden away from our customers. And let me say that our team of co the consortium or the team that you are working with will be able to follow up on, will be able to follow through on all the approvals, starting off with the the building approvals from the relevant counties, they'll be able to follow up on that to ensure that uh, they, they have been approved. That is from all the statutory bodies, either uh, the county government, to ensure that they, they have been approved. If it's uh, with NCA, National Construction Authority, they, we have also um, co uh, contractors through the, cons through, the, through the consortium. We also have contractors whereby also they'll be able to follow through to ensure that, um, that all the approvals are in place. So for this, um, for Mothoni and even for our viewers, what they need to be able to be aware of is that NCBA Easy Build is hard holding you. It's for you just to be able to make maybe one or two payments because what we require our customers to be able to pay for their structure However, we we'll finance up to 100% financing. Uh, we we'll finance the, the construction as well as also financing of the professional fees. Okay. I think still on you, Stella. I have James Korea on YouTube. Do employees on contract qualify for mortgage financing? If yes, is the repayment period limited to the contract period or it can go beyond? Um, uh, we we don't limit. Uh, what we look at is um, as long as you are salaried, we look at two factors. Are you on permanent or you're on contract basis? So if, even though you're on contract basis at NCBA, we'll be able to finance you. And what you look at is we look at your credentials and uh, maybe the, how long your contract has been approved in the, in the previous years. And uh, when you look at your the profession or the industry that you're in, but uh, we don't we don't say that we can't finance someone who's on contract, but we finance um, as long as you have a source of income. Okay. Um, I think I have a question here for Lawrence. Moses Sitati on YouTube. Some financial advisors and wazes <laughs> who have built advice that homes are not assets. They tie up a lot of capital that could instead provide the rental, rental years or dividend. What's your what's your take, Lawrence? Uh, okay, that's one of those where okay, I'll give I'll give my uh, input to that. Um, so just going back to Stella's point on the stability, uh, if if you have the, the home, uh, so there's that uh, aspect uh, with COVID uh, last year. So again, it really depends on on your priorities because. Um, I may decide to not build the house, so I have the money, but then where then are you placing the money? So the, where you earn, the rate of return you earn to the alternative of you paying the rent. If it's higher, you clearly can run a business that can give you 20% per month, then by all means do that. Um, but then if you can't, uh, housing is still always a, a very safe option. And then there's also the aspect of capital appreciation um, over time especially if it's in a good location. And then of course you maintain the, the property. All right. I think I also just- jumping into that one, please. All right. Don't mind. I think it's the reason why everybody's on this, uh, uh, on this call, on this webinar. But I think um, um, also uh, not everything is always about financial benefit. Yes, if you looked at it from a purely financial uh, benefit perspective, uh, building, to, uh, building or buying to rent uh, certainly uh, performs better than, uh, than, than to own or, or to live in. Eh? Uh, but there are certain fundamentals that are almost from a sentimental point of view. And like I said earlier, it's a price test. You can't put a price tag to peace of mind. I mean, we go on holidays. Uh, does it make financial sense? Maybe not. But uh, the mental well-being, um, if, if that's converted, the, the peace of mind knowing my children, no matter what happens to me, um, my children will have a roof over their head, no matter what. That you cannot put a price to. Uh, maybe I'm speaking from a, a, a mother point of view, so I put a disclaimer there. Uh, but there's, there's, there's two sides of things. And I think, um, yes, rental yield is important, but the shock or, that we got last year from COVID shows that you may think about rental yield, you may think about all that, but um, or, or, or putting your money into shares and, and others, but having a roof of your, over your head that keeps you, gives you peace of mind no matter what, for your children is 
is it's priceless as it were. So I come from that uh, school of thought, um, but I, I did give a disclaimer. Uh, but there are certain things that are not necessarily financial, but the mental aspect and um, and peace of mind you get make it worth it. So it's always yeah. just being knowing why are you doing it. Huh? So maybe if you don't have a family like Roba, we had put there in the in the in the personalities, then maybe that's not a factor for you. But if you're on your key, you have a child, you're a single mother, and you want to know that your child, no matter what happens to you, is is safe and secure, then that, that that's that's why where you're coming from is very fundamental into why and how then you invest in, invest in real estate. All right. Okay. Philip, uh, Philip, Philip, can you put uh, to yeah. Um, so also on the return, mm. because then I, I, like I've seen, we have a product in Two Rivers, a more affordable one, where we started at 4.4 million. We are now at 4.9 within six months. So that's close to 10% uh, return. So really it's also at what stage you enter within some of these uh, purchases uh, for you. Yeah. Stella shoots. All right. What I wanted to say is, um, when looking looking at a property, one thing is um, due to the appraisation part of it, it's it's a stepping stone to other investments. So you find that maybe I'll get into this property and it appreciates year on year. It appreciates in between four to five percent. So within maybe like ten years, I'm able to get into another investment through the initial property that um that I had, and that's why at NCBA we have a product we call equity release, whereby you can be able to borrow against an existing property, you know, or if you already have a mortgage, you can be able to do a top up. So there's that the 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 uh, that bit of the investment, as well as also a home is a home or a property, or if you it's a basic need that um it's a basic need that everybody needs a roof over over their heads. Thanks. All right, just still on you, Stella. I think just tied to what you've just, um, I rejoined to what you've just um, mentioned right in there on equity release or any other product that may suit or may answer this question from Mike Kinwa on Facebook. Mike um, is joining us from Subukia Bandas. Um, uh, and he's saying he wanted us to tackle financing uh, new building trends. I think we'll incorporate that in our next webinar. Thank you for that input, uh, Mike. And then his question is, for instance, is it possible to finance a container home? That's a good question. That's a good question um, uh, to, to, to our viewer. And, and one thing I can be able, and how I can be able to answer this question is that um, as NCBA, we are not static on, um, on the brick and mortar. And what we do is that uh, we have, realize that um, building technologies are evolving day and day. And what we do as, as a bank is for us to be able to visit that project, to be able to look at the, look at the, 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 the property itself. Uh, one thing that we need to look at is we need to ensure that the property is insurable because all our properties, uh, if somebody takes up a mortgage uh, with NCBA, we ensure that the property is insured in, in case of fire or burglary. We, we ensure that it, we have domestic package cover as well as a mortgage protection cover for the person, for the borrower. But for us, maybe to the to the viewer, how I can be able to answer that question is that um, we are not static on the on the new building technologies that are there. We 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 are aware of the trends, and uh, we we will just need to be able to visit that particular property and are certain that we're able to finance. Thank you for that, Stella. I think there is Marky Dibs here from Facebook saying, "Do we have a product for Chamas?" And allow me to respond and say, "Yes, we do." So please feel free, Marky Dibs, to leave your contacts, and we'll be glad to contact you and provide more details on this. Um, I think. Um, I have two more questions left, I think, uh, so that we can wrap up this exciting discussion. Um, Irene Naseya, uh, Naisenya from Facebook is, is, is asking Stella, what about financing for rental units outside the areas you had mentioned in your presentation, a place like Narok? Um, can we cover that? Thank you. Thank you for that question. Is that uh, one thing um, for NCBA, we finance uh, as long as a property is within what we used to call municipalities, but currently it's within the county headquarters. We are able to finance uh, either if you want to buy a home, if you want for investment purposes, that is for rental purposes, we, we, are, we are open and we'll be able to finance um, that property in, in Narok as long as it's within the county headquarters. Uh, what, what we don't finance as an institution is our ancestral properties. But uh, 
uh, as long as the property is within the municipalities or the county headquarters, we will we'll go for it. Thank you for that reaffirmation, Stella. I think on to the just last question uh, on Easy Build, um, Malkia Kenya from Facebook is asking with NCPA Easy Build. I understand there are designs one can choose from, but is there flexibility in changing the designs both um, on the outside or perhaps maybe inside of the home? Thank you, thank you for that question, Mark here. And what I can be able to say is, yes, we have the off the shelf designs that you can be able to select from. However, we'll sit with you at conceptualization of the of what you want to be able to construct and we'll be able to listen to you. You are not cast on stone that we have to pick all these designs. We'll, we'll, we'll listen to you. If you want um, a trade design or whatever type of design, we'll be able to incorporate it and, um, uh, and, and, and build it for you. And sorry, and draw it for you, take it for approvals and build it for you. All right. Thank you to our viewers. We've come to an end of our webinar for today. And allow me to close by saying, first and foremost, um, I express my sincere appreciation to the speakers and the panelists for their valuable contribution to our webinar today. And um, then uh, secondly, um, my deepest gratitude goes to all who attended the webinar. I know quite a number have probably dropped off but we really, really appreciate that you found time to join us this morning and to help us make this web webinar a successful event. And before also ending my closing remarks, I would like to convey my deepest appreciation to our keynote speaker, um, our deputy director and head of personal banking, uh, uh, Masi Kaguria, uh, for engaging us today and for also sharing and reaffirming that uh, NCBA indeed um, 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 supports our customers through the property finance journey. I've been your moderator for today, Philip Omondi, and I welcome you to visit any of our branches countrywide um, or our property centers, um, the main one located at Mamangina branch uh, that is in town next to International Life, Life House. For more information regarding our property finance solution and any other products that we currently offer in the market, I can assure you, our viewers, that we guarantee you convenience and excellence throughout the mortgage process as you decide whether you want to buy or build. Thank you all for being here today and for taking time to patiently listen to what we had in store. I wish you all a successful day. Stay safe. Remember to sanitize, keep social distance, and we welcome you to the bank that says, go for it. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>